Y'all having a good time? chapter 6, verse 20. Deuteronomy 6, verse 20. While you turn, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you for the day that you have made for us to be in your house. Lord, on this, this weekend, Lord, we're just so thankful for what you've done for us, where you brought us from, the family that you've given us. Lord, I'm thankful for my friends and my family that are here today, Lord. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for the, the bond that we have with one another here, Lord. But, Lord, most of all, I'm thankful for what you did on the cross to save our souls. Lord, I'm thankful for where you brought us from, Father. I'm thankful for what you've done in our lives, in my life, Lord. Lord, I just praise your holy name today, and we can't thank you enough, Lord. Lord, as we get ready to go into this Christmas season, Lord, we have our mind focused on gifts and family and one another, Lord. But, Lord, I pray that we can focus our minds on you. That, Lord, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have all these nice things. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be the people that we are today. Lord, I just honor you in this place. Lord, I pray right now as I bring this message that you would help me. I ask, Lord God, that you would send your holy anointing. I ask that it would start right now in this pulpit, Lord. I ask that you would forgive me of every sin in my life, Lord. That you would look down on me and that you would wash me and wash me over and over again with that precious blood. Lord, I pray that when you look down on us in this place, that you're pleased with our lives. You're pleased with the way we're living. And Lord God, if you're not, convict us. <laughs> convict us, Lord, so we can come to know who you are in a greater light. Lord, I pray for the congregation today as they hear these words, that you would help them. 
I pray, Lord, for mercy and grace in this place, for we know that we need it. Lord, I pray that you would help us. Help us, Lord. We need your help. We can't do it on our own. We can't do nothing without you. And I ask, Lord, that you would do it today in this place. And we know that you're able. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, give us some emphasis. Say, hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Mm. All right. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgment, judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed us signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household, before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And I want to read that verse one more time. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Amen. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God, for our God always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Amen. <coughs> now today, we're going to talk a little bit about the story of Israel in bondage in Egypt. Amen? Now, last week, I stood here and I gave you my testimony where God had brought me from, what he had done in my life, and the man that I am today. Amen? The man that stands before you was nothing like the man before. And Israel also had a testimony. Israel also had history recorded. Come on, y'all. Can I get an amen and ask amen. God? Amen. And as we dissect this scripture right here, I want you to know that Israel, they went into bondage in Egypt as 70 souls. There were 70 men and women that went into Egypt. At the time of Pharaoh, when God brought them out, they had multiplied to about 3 million people. Amen? Now, in this time, they had hard labor. They were slaves of Egypt. They built cities and, and had to work from the sweat of their brow for 430 years. And then God brought them out, and the word says that he brought them out with a high hand. Amen? He brought the Israelite people out of bondage in Egypt. And this is what Moses is telling the children of Israel here. They're getting ready to go into the promised land. And Moses is telling them to look back and remember what God had done for them and look forward to where God has taken them to. Amen? Amen. And that's why I want to zero in on verse 23, if I can talk this morning. Verse 23, and it said, he brought us out to bring us in. Amen? Yeah. He brought us out to bring us in. So God brought the Israelites out of bondage, out of Egypt, to, to bring them in to the promised land. But God brought me out to, of my spiritual Egypt, uh, out of addiction and bondage that I was serving to this world. He brought me out to, to bring me into a land of flowing with milk and honey, glory be to God, that I could be saved, that I could be sanctified, and I could be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He brought us out to, to bring us in, glory be to God. Now, I want you to think about Israel. They was brought out of Egypt, and they walked through the wilderness for 40 years. Come on, y'all. They got out of Israel, and it was only a four-day journey to the promised land flowing with milk and honey, the word, and the commentary say that there was grapes so big that men had to carry them on poles. 
Come on, y'all. It was a plentiful land. It was a beautiful land. It was a great land. But they got out of Egypt, and they like to complain a little bit. Come on, y'all. And they went around and around and around the desert for 40 years. Now, at this point, we coming right in and it's getting ready to turn over to Joshua and they was getting ready to have to pass over the river of Jordan and then they was going to go in to what God had promised them. Amen? They was getting ready to cross over Jordan and move in to what God had given them. God had promised Abraham that he would make them a mighty nation and give them a place to be. Amen? Amen. Give them a land that was good, a good land. Come on, y'all. And he was... He was right there on the brink of it, and they was getting ready to pass over the river. Now, this is what I want to talk about. God brought us out to bring us in. And when they went in to the promised land, that was the beginning. Even though they had spent 40 years in the desert, that was on them. Come on, y'all. Because they didn't do what God had called them to do. They didn't listen to God's word. They didn't do his statues. And, and God had to teach them how to live and how to be. And that whole generation, they got out and the new generation was going into the land of Canaan. Amen? Y'all help me out a little bit in here today. I'm giving you the backstory. We're building right now, all right? We build, I got my hammer in my hand. Come on, Rev. Give me some amens. I need your help, bro. Right now. Right now. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. So he brought them out to bring them in. And they were getting ready to cross over Jordan. And that's where the work started. Amen. Now us in here, God has brought us out. Glory be to God. He brought us out uh, with a high hand, Kathy. He brought me so far out uh, to bring us in, into what? Uh, into love, into joy, into happiness, into good things. The life that I'm living now, he brought me in uh, to the promised land. Come on, y'all. And I'm living a life now, glory be to God, that's blessed, uh, that's highly favored. The word says I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out, Roger. I'm a head. I'm never a tail. I'm above and never beneath. Glory be to God. I am living a, a blessed life because God brought me out to, to bring me in. Now, once we get in, once we get in, I want you to know the Israelites, once they moved into the land of Israel, they had to conquer the land. They didn't just move in and it was all good and, and everything was great. Uh, they had to go to war. Yeah. They had to take what God had given them. They had to conquer all of those different ites that you read about in the Bible. Amen? Yeah. And today, as God has brought us out to bring us in, DJ, I want you to know that there's still going to be some battles we still got to fight. Uh, there's still going to be some things that we got to go through. Uh, there's still going to be some sickness. There's still going to be some heartache. Uh, there's still going to be some of the emotional things uh, that we've got to conquer in our life. Uh, and you say, oh, how in the world, uh, even though God has brought us out to bring us in, uh, and when we move in, how do we conquer it? Uh, how do we do it? How do we get the victory? And this is what I want to say today. This is how you do it. You've got to be brought out to be brought in, but you've got to be all in. That's right. You've got to be all in. You say, how could the Israelite people stand up against people that they had never seen before, giants like they had seen, uh, and have the victory? Because they was all in. Come on, y'all. They was all. He brought us out to bring us in, but you got to be all in to conquer it. You got to be all in. Come on, y'all. This is a good message. I don't know if y'all like it or not, but I don't care. I'm going to preach it anyway. Glory be to God. You got to be all in. A man that goes to war, he's got to be all in, or he's going to get whipped. Come on. A woman that goes to war has to be all in or she's going to die along the way. Come on. I want you to know today that I'm all in. I'm not half in and half out. I'm not worried about this and that. I am all in for my God because he's brought us so far and he's given me a land to conquer. And I'm going to conquer what God has given us. Come on now. It's the promised land flowing with milk and honey. You say, but I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling with that. I tell you, get all in. Yeah. Or you say, well, I'm struggling in my finances. Or I'm struggling in my faith. I'm struggling in my spirituality. Get all in this morning. 
You want to move into the promised land? You want to start conquering all the ites around you? You want to conquer all those things that have come against your life? I tell you this morning, get all in. Amen. All in. Today I'm all in. Come on, Dad. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen on the back row? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He brought me out, Charlie, to bring me in. But once I get in, come on. People say, oh, well, you're a Christian. You're living the good life. We still face battles. We, feel, we still face hard times. The only difference in me and someone else is I got Jesus behind me. I got Jesus walking hand in hand with me. I'm not fighting giants alone. I'm not conquering cities by myself. I want you to know that I got the line of the king of Judah with me. He's standing with me now. He'll stand with me tomorrow. And I'm all in with him. And he's going to carry me all the way through. God told the Israelites, everywhere where the sole of your foot steps, uh, that's your land. Amen. Once they cross that Jordan River, everywhere you step, that's yours. I give it to you. Don't worry about what this person says, that person says, this king does. Uh, it doesn't matter. I give you the land. Conquer it. Uh, but they had to be all in. Today, I want you to know, uh, every time your feet hit the floor, glory be to God. Uh, every time my feet uh, come up out the bed, DJ, and I'm slipping down into my little hey dudes, glory be to God. Uh, I want you to know that every way this little footsteps, uh, it's a conqueror. Why? Because I'm all in. Uh, I said I'm all in. Uh, and I got God behind me. Uh, and as long as he's for me, who can be against me? Glory be to God. Uh, I want you to know that I'm all in today. Uh, and he's going to carry me all the way through. Roger asked me this morning, he said, you're going you gonna to give it everything you got? I said, I'm going to give it all and save none. I'm all in this morning. Come on. You say, well, I can't beat that addiction. It's time you stop playing games with God and get on. You say, well, that alcohol, that bottle just keeps on creeping up on me. I tell you what. I said, I tell you what, it's time you start getting all in. Come on, you say, I can't put them cigarettes down. You say, oh, it's time that you get all in. Come on, I can't stop doing this. I can't stop doing that. It's time we get all in and stop worrying about what the world has to offer and move forward for God. Glory be to God. They went in, they started conquering cities. Jericho was the first city. They marched around and around and the walls came tumbling down. Come on, y'all. And they moved forward and further and further into the promised land. And in the end, they conquered the whole land. They conquered everything God had for them. They still fighting for that land over there today. I want you to know that what God gives you, it's eternal. God doesn't just give you something and take it away. If you're all in, he'll give you something and you can keep it. If he gives you something, it's all in and it's eternal. And you don't have to worry about it passing away because what God makes is the good stuff. Come on, y'all. Glory, I'm having me a good time now. He said... He said, I brought, and he brought us out from this that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Now, in this portion of scripture, at the beginning there, he was telling them, he said, when your son asked you in times to come, what mean these testimonies? That's what it says right there in verse 20. And then 21 says, then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Now, Israel was brought out of Egypt with the plagues. Remember the plagues? Can I get an amen if you remember the plagues? There was ten plagues, amen? <laughs> brought them out, and all the land around heard what God did to Egypt. Amen? And here he was telling them, when your son asks you, about all these testimonies about the Pharaoh and about the, the plagues done in Israel, I mean in Egypt, uh, and the 40 years that you walked around the, the wilderness, and then you come up to the, uh, the Jordan River, and the, the Jordan River moved back just like the Red Sea, and they stepped through on dry land. When all of this stuff happens, uh, and your sons and your daughters grow up, uh, you tell them the testimonies that you have seen. Amen? Amen? 
Now, I want you to think, when they moved in to the Canaan's land and started conquering these cities, they had something in their arsenal that no one else had. They had, number one, God. And they remembered what God had done. They remembered what God had done. They remembered the victory that they, he had given them down in Egypt. Uh, so they knew if God was on their side, uh, what were the Canaanites? Uh, they was nothing compared to God. If God could take down Egypt, uh, the greatest nation at that time in the world, come on, y'all. If God could do that uh, and deliver them out of slavery, out of bondage there, what's he going to do uh, when we rally together and start fighting with one another instead of getting one another. Come on, y'all. And we move into the Canaan's land and we start conquering those cities. And that's what I want to ask us today. Man, when we get together in the house of God, oh, when we get together in prayer, when we get together in our Bible study and we come one with another and we get, it gets time to fight, uh, we're going to be so much stronger and we look back on the things that we've, we've accomplished where God has brought us from. Come on now. Where he brought us out of uh, to bring us in, to get all that. Come on now. When we look back on those things, uh, that gives us our, our fuel to fight. Amen. 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 You say, well, I'm, I'm at my last leg. Come on. Roger said, I'm at my last leg. <laughs> Daddy said, I'm on my last leg. Then I reached the end of the road. He said, how can I take one more step? When I done reached about as far as I can go, I done had all I can handle. I can't take no more. He said, how in the world am I supposed to fight when all my fights don't give up? All my fights don't give out. I'll tell you how to fight. Remember what God did for you yesterday. Remember the steps that you took yesterday. Yeah. Remember the breath that you breathed yesterday. Remember the victories that he gave you 10 years ago. Yeah. Remember yeah. remember what God did for you down in Egypt. And when you go to fight, when you raise the sword, oh, come on, church. When we face the ones who we think we can't come against, yeah. God's going to show up and he's going to give us the victory. Amen. Glory. He brought us out yes. to bring us in. When we get in and start fighting, you better be all of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, they conquered that whole land. They conquered it all. Amen? You say, what happens after you conquer it? What happens after God brings you out to bring you in and you get all in? You got to keep it. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. You got to keep it. See, a lot of people, they run for a long time. They do good for a long time, Charlie. Joy, they fight for a long time. But sometimes during the fight, during the weariness, during the getting battle hardened, they give up. Yeah, that's right. What would have happened if the Israelites would have went into God's promised land, the, the land flowing with milk and honey, this great place that God had given them, and they went in and conquered it, and then they just said, give up. They'd have lost it all. They'd have lost the whole land. But they never gave up. And I'm telling you today, once you get in all in and you conquer what God has sent you to conquer, you got to keep it. Amen. You got to keep it. You got to keep that salvation. You got to keep that joy. Amen. You got to keep that love. Amen. You got to keep that praise. On, you got to keep that power. Yeah. You got to yeah. keep that Holy Ghost anointing moving in. Yeah. You say, how in the world do you keep it? You keep on fighting. Yeah. You keep on putting one foot in front of the other. You keep on praying. You keep on coming to church. You keep on serving God. You keep on getting your nose in the Bible. You keep on seeking his face. You keep on marching. Don't never give up. Don't never turn back. Because they didn't have the means 
when they got it to keep it. Come on, y'all. They didn't have the means. They didn't have what it really took. It looked good. Man, it looked good. It looked fun. It looked great. We're going to live high on the hog. Come on, y'all. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. But the bank account that they had, the pocketbook, the, the little greenback that was in their pocket uh, wasn't stable enough for, for them to keep uh, what they wanted. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on. That's right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. They was writing checks that they couldn't cash. Right. Come on. Yeah. Amen. On. That's what Christians do. Yeah. Amen. Come on, y'all. We start running, we start doing this, we start doing that. Oh, I want to help, I want to do this, I want to do that. And before you know it, we done fanned it out on the side somewhere. Yeah. Come on. Once you get it, you better keep it. Once you get that blood, you better keep that blood. Once you get that salvation down in your heart, you better keep that salvation. Once you get that prayer life, you better keep that prayer life. Once you get those hours of study, you better keep on those hours of study. Once you get your brothers and sisters in Christ, you better keep your brothers and sisters in Christ. Once you get down to the house of God and start having a good time, you better keep having a good time. Whatever you get, you better keep it. Come on, y'all. He brought me out to bring me in. Amen. He's already done that. I had to be all in to conquer what he said I could have. I had to be all in. Not no wish-washy stuff. Not no in and out. So he brought us out to bring us in, but we like to go in and out instead of all in. Come on. I'm giving y'all a whole lot this morning, ain't you? You ain't gonna know if you're in or out or here or there or where once I get done. Amen. Come on. But we do what's opposite of what God tells us to do. That's right. Don't we? We, we always do the opposite of what God tells us. Amen. He says, look, I done brought you out to bring in. You go in and come out. I don't want to move out of what God has for me. I want to be all in. Amen. Can you say amen in the house of God if you want to be all in? Come on, God. I'm all in, DJ. I'm not playing games. I'm not standing up here preaching to you because I just want to be up here and look pretty, which is real hard to do anyway. Come on. I'm not here just for somebody to come and hear my voice talk or, or preach to some phone on YouTube. I'm here because I care about your soul, and I'm telling you today that you better be all in, or one day you're not going to make it. Come on. He said, I brought you out to bring you in. You better be all in when you go to conquer, and when you conquer it, you better keep it. Come on, y'all. It's time we keep it. It's time we keep it. Why? Because all the stuff that he's done for us here, he's getting ready to even take us to a greater place. I said a greater place. I said a greater place. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. I'm talking about heaven. Yeah. I'm talking about a land where there's going to be no more dying. Amen. There's going to be no more pain. Amen. There's going to be no more heartaches. Oh. There's going to be no more knee replacements. Amen. Come on, there's going to be no more sickness, no sorrow, no tears. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. The only thing that is going to be there is love, joy, peace, happiness, yeah. glory, shouting and singing, banjos and guitars. Come on. Hallelujah. Streets of gold. Mansions of top mansions and mansions. Jacuzzi pools. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look, I threw that one in there. I've had a thought of it. But how you get there, you got to be all in. Amen. You got to be all in. To step through the gate, you got to be all in. A lot of Christians ain't all in. That's why they have so much trouble. They have trouble in their life, in their soul, because they're war against self. Because instead of being all in with God, we want to have one foot in the world yep. and one hand in the Kool-Aid. Come on, baby. Amen. And you can't have both. That's right. Amen. You've heard the saying, the devil owns the fence, and he does. You can't be halfway and half out. You've got to be all in today, and that's what I want to ask you. Are you all in? And do you mean it? Once you conquer it, are you going to keep it? Are you going to faint off on the side of the road some way? Come on. Yeah. It don't matter how hard you run. Come on, this, is a, this ain't a race of, of how fast we're going to get there. This is a long distance thing. Come on, they've been talking about Jesus for 2,000 years. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. 
Heard it all my life, brother. Jesus coming soon. It could be any man. It could. It's sooner now than it was 2,000 years ago. Any minute, he's getting ready to break the clouds. Any minute. This old boy right here, Jeff, I'm going to step through the gate. I don't know if I'm going to have cowboy boots on or some hay dudes, but it don't matter to me. Come on, when I step through the gate, I'm going to praise my God. You say, how are you going to get there? Because I'm going to be all in. All in. I'm all in. I'm trying to drive that into your mind this morning. You better be all in or you're not going to make it. I want to be all in for God because he was all in for me. He didn't go halfway to the cross and stop he didn't pick up the cross and carry it a few feet. Like, oh, I can't do this. This ain't for me. You're going to have to get somebody else. They didn't drill one nail in this hand. He was like, oh, I can't handle this. This is just too hard. It's too tough. Come on. He didn't do that. He was invested, Charlie. Rayford, he was all in. Why did he do it? Because he loved you. Amen. And if you love God the way you say that you love God, you'll be all in too. Stop playing games with God. Amen? Let's go all in. Let it all hang out. Amen? Come on. How do you want to live today? I want to be a conqueror, more than a conqueror. And I want to keep what God has given me. He's given us some good stuff. Salvation, most of all. That's the greatest gift He can give. Salvation. I want to keep my salvation. It took a lot to conquer. Amen. It took a lot for me to conquer who I was. But God's blood, Jesus' blood, come in and washed it off. He washed it. And now I'm all in for Jesus today. And I will not have it any other way. Will you stand with me today? He brought me out to bring me in. When we go in, we got to be all in. Or we're going to lose what God has given us. Today I'm going to ask DJ if he'll come to the front and play us a song. If you're living your life halfway in or halfway out, I tell you to come to this altar today and give it over to him. And when you leave, be all in. Don't play no more games. Come on, y'all. Because the things that we have to face on a day-to-day, he will allow us to conquer if we have our heart for him. And we can keep what he has given us. Please come.
Love y'all this morning. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to ask Charlie to dismiss us in prayer.